Hi, my name is Michael Dell. I'm a Ganawage Rono living with special needs. When I was interviewed, I had an idea for a show for people from Ganawage living with disabilities. Today is the start of that show, Walk in My World. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Welcome back to another episode of Walk in My World. As you know, in the, if you've watched previous shows, we cover a, a wide spectrum of topics in the past. But today we are going to talk cover a topic that is not normally covered in Kahnawake. Uh, we're going to talk about disabled employment and what are, what are the um, drawbacks uh, being that there is very limited disabled employment in Kahnawake. With me today I have Eugene Mator and Herb Bryce from Day One in Dazato. Welcome guys and thank you for joining us. Hey Mike, thanks for having us on the show. So maybe you can explain um, what both of you do at Dewani Dazata to begin. Okay, uh, I am the employment and training officer. Um, basically, I help people find employment, and I also help employers to find uh, suitable employees for their place of business. Okay, um, I'm sure as you, as you are aware, um, I'm sure that. There is very limited um, employment for disabled people right now. Um, um, the thing is um, that you know there is very there is very li limited um, educational opportunities for them, for them, and some of them um, may need su support. So does Dewa and Dazata have, have a, a component within Dewa to uh, handle this right now? Well, we do have funding for disabilities on top of our regular funding. Uh, the disability funding is available for someone who has a, a disability and who is looking to either improve their education through academics or possibly to get into some type of vocational training. Um, as I said, we have a, a regular funding for that, and on top of that, we have some additional funds for someone who is disabled. Uh, now, when you classify disabled, uh, since the severity of disability is so broad, uh, can you uh, explain more? Okay, well, first of all, within the community, um, we're not sure exactly how many people are disabled or working who are disabled. Um, we don't keep that, we don't have the type of information. I'm not sure where in the community that type of information would be kept. Plus you also have a lot of people um, who don't want to declare that they are disabled because of confidentiality issues and others who uh, don't consider themselves disabled. Um, people who are looking to be employed in the community but who have a disability, they face uh, challenges. Um, we, um, you know, we who don't have disabilities, we can only, um, by observation, we can't know all of the challenges that a disabled person will have in trying to find employment. Um, you know, through previous experience and observation, we've begun to understand some of the challenges that they have, and to also understand that each person who has a disability has their own individual challenges. For example, um, and they come in a wide variety of challenges. For example, someone who's been a construction worker for many years, but who's injured on the job and can no longer do that type of work, uh, they would have a disability in terms of not being able to do the type of work they want to do. So they would, have, they would become a candidate for retraining for another type of uh, work-related function. Um, other people with disabilities, uh, with more severe physical disabilities, they face their own challenges. For example, 
um, they would, there would be some limitations in the type of work environment they could be employed in. Um, there's the stigma that uh, people will say, well, they're disabled, they, they can't do a good job. That's a stigma they face. Also, there's the perception that a, a person who has a disability, a physical disability, um, their attendance would suffer or their level of absences would increase because of their disability. And also the fact that, you know, a lot of people see a physical disability and they might also think, well, this person has an intellectual or a developmental disability, which is not the case. Someone with a physical disability very often is, has no problem in, in intellectually or developmentally. So yes, they can do a good job. Um, conversely, someone with uh, an intellectual or developmental disability, again, that ranges from uh, someone who's autistic to someone who has a mild learning disability. And again, um, they face their own set of challenges. Again, it's uh, the perception that uh, they can't do a good job. There are some limitations in the type of work they can do. Um, the stigma, again, that um, this person who's intellectually or developmentally dis disabled, they uh, will have a high level of absences, their attendance won't be good at the job. Um, and uh, again, the perception, if they have an intellectual disability, well, maybe they have a physical disability too, but you know, a, a lot of times someone with an intellectual or developmental disability can do a good job because they don't have any physical limitations. Um, also, when you look at an intellectual or developmental disability person, again, it's a high functioning, low functioning, someone with a mild learning disability, it's very difficult to understand or to even uh, perceive that they do have a disability. Someone who has a severe learning disability or an intellectual disability, it's a little bit easier to, to notice that they do have a disability. Um, when I talk about low functioning, high functioning, again, it, it comes down to the fact that every person who is disabled intellectually, it's individual, uh, individually uh, the challenge that they face. Some who can do a good job, uh, who may not be perceived as disabled, um, would probably be in a better position to become employed than someone who has a, an obvious either physical or developmental disability. So, uh, uh, how, what steps is they want taken to um, uh, pre prepare? Or what is they want already have in place to if somebody uh, walked in to uh, they want tomorrow that wasn't already known to them and said, "I'm disabled and I don't particularly want to take part in the hospital program or young adults, but I want to go." for uh, some type of schooling, for academics or whatever. What, what services are there besides uh, going to those two places? Well, that uh, would be handled by one of our employment counselors, and uh, Jean could uh, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, what we would do, we would have, you, uh, uh, have the, uh, the client come in and do an evaluation on them, you know, talk to them and see what they want to do, what their objective is, what, they, what their, uh, their limitations are. And then we work with them if they you know if they want to go to school, they can uh, handle uh, taking the program. Uh, you know, we'll work with them and see how this will meet up to their, their career objectives. Um, so that's that's the first step that we would do is to sit down and, and get to know the person first before uh, and then we'll talk to them and uh, see what they want to do. Now, does it necessary we have to be uh, in Gunawagi or can it be outside? Uh, you're talking about going to school? Yeah. It could be, yeah, it could be anywhere. Okay, so you would you would do all the necessary steps to get to know the client, uh, but you know that when you uh, that you de de when you deal with a disabled client, sometimes maybe not for everybody, but for some people, uh, they come with a caregiver. So the caregiver gets involved also in that step because they want to know where's my son going to school, blah, 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 what needs to be, uh, what needs to be followed on their end, you know? So the, there's always that sense of pr protection there. So, um, you know, so 
it's, uh, guess what you're saying to me and the community is that it's individual, individualized? Right, right. You can, you know, as far as going to school, you can uh, pretty much go anywhere you want to go to school. Now, uh, it's up to it's up to the client if they want to take uh, attend a, a certain uh, facility for for education, and uh, you know, and if the caregiver is willing to go there, or if the um, the facility uh, you know will take care of you, uh, and the caregiver can leave for a period of time. That's, that's totally up to the, the client if they want to accept that and be able to uh, take that challenge and go forward and take that kind of training. I guess I'm going to share something with my audience, personal. I'm at the Ganawage Learning Center, True Day Wani Dazata, and I've been there for the past three years. Um, this is my last year that I'm going to complete. It's been pretty... Um, uh, interesting for me, but it's been pretty interesting for the Ganamwagi Learning Center as well because they've had to adapt not only educational wise but ed the building wise to meet my needs while I'm there. So that's where I am, and that's how uh, for people that may not know, that's how Walk in My World got started through the Ganamwagi Learning Center, and it's been all uphill from there. But now that's we're gonna get back to the interview. So, uh, uh, so like you were saying, everything is individualized for whatever whatever the person wants. What if they want to go to school out of, out of Quebec? Out of Quebec, that's that's uh, that's possible to go to school out of, outside of Quebec. But okay, if they if if they go to school out of Quebec, they and they they need a special residence to live live with attendant care. Does they want to provide the attendant care? We're not sure. We never really had the situation come up where someone with a, disa a disability, with a caregiver, uh, wants to go outside the community and how much we would be funding for that. So again, it would come down to an individual basis and how much would be involved and how much would be, uh, would be covered. It's not entirely impossible, but we'd have to look at it. Okay. So yeah, that's that's just good good for them to know. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 thing is, all, all all options should be explored because you know they may want they may want a little more than what you normally offer. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what good. So um, do you do, does do either one of you know uh, what it, what a shelter workshop is when we're talking about? people with special needs? Um, as I understand a sheltered workshop, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, because I used to deal, I used to be a regional coordinator for Quebec Special Olympics in Chateauguay for many years, so I've seen a lot of intellectually handicapped people, and uh, I know they go to some, I guess you could call it a sheltered workshop, where they go to activities strictly for the intellectually handicapped, and also there are some employment opportunities for intellectually handicapped. So I know a few people in Chateauguay who are intellectually handicapped who go to these workshops to learn how to uh, make themselves uh, available for employment. Um, I don't know if that's what you mean by yeah, a sheltered workshop. That's exactly what I mean. Okay. But the thing is, um, well, I... I went to school for myself off reserve for 13 years, plus five more years in machine. And then uh, after, before that, I went to Constance Lipbridge for work training. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were gonna put me in the area of NDG, mm -hmm. like to work in a small place of business along with somebody. And they ended up putting me in a shelter workshop. Okay. And I ended up staying there for two years. And then coming home, uh, no, coming back to Ganawage after, the, after they told me, look, this is not going to meet your needs because the next part we, we go in, mm -hmm. in, the, in the shelter workshop, there's no supervisor there. You have to go to the company and work by yourself and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So what they were doing is they were, they were, they were teaching us how to, how to be self-sufficient and one of our coworkers was going to be the supervisor on site. And the person from the rehab center who was a supervisor for that person would pass maybe 
once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. So because of my physical limitations, they realized I couldn't do that part. So I had to leave there, go to John Grant for five years, take my part of my work training there. Then I came back to stay, uh, Young Adults was just beginning at that time. So then I, I, I went there. And then after being there for about five years, I decided I wanted to change. So then that's how all this came about. But, um, you know, so what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at after saying all that is, do you think there should be some kind of um, work program spon sponsored through Daywani Dezata and, uh, and businesses, local businesses in Kahnawake to take uh, disabled people who may want to uh, get their feet wet and test the waters for employment? Because uh, there are some people that are, uh, could be very employable in general. I don't. Uh, I don't know anybody in particular. I'm just saying in general. So you know, like you know, like I could think of like uh, the hardware store, uh, our local markets. You know, it's not. Uh, it's not to say they're going to do a 40 hour a week work job. Just just for a couple hours a day, and maybe some. Maybe they'll do the morning, and then they'll go back to the young young adults for the afternoon. Could you see some something like that working in Gunawaga? Um, well, right now we have an employment assistance program within Dewa Dunizakta. Uh, it helps people who have barriers to employment to find employment, and it also helps the employers to give a good work experience to someone who's looking for work. Uh, disabled people are not excluded from that. They're, we can consider them, um, and there is some, as I said, additional disability funding which could be applied to the employment assistance program. Now the funding is, could be used for any one of a number of things so when it's related to disabilities. Um, included, for example, workplace adaptation for someone with a physical handicap. So all these things, and it, it is possible. And uh, um, as I said, from previous work experience, uh, and previous experience, we've seen uh, people with disabilities find jobs. For example, I've seen some of the intellectually handicapped in Shadagay. I see one guy who's working at one of the depreneurs. I see someone else who's working at uh, one of the uh, uh, smaller factories within Chateauguay doing uh, a little bit of production work. So it is possible. And uh, if I could just take it a step further, Michael, um, what you've done personally is probably a, a good example for the disabled and the handicapped. Um, you've got yourself a good television show here. You've uh, progressed nicely, and for those in the community who don't know, Mike is also taking our entrepreneur, entrepreneurship training program every Monday night. Um, you've got business plans, and you want to eventually have a small business of your own. So he's taking those steps to get this type of thing done. Yeah, and you know, it couldn't be possible without uh, family support, community support, and uh, they wanted the, the, the lots of support because without those people, uh, where would I be? And I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to Dave Walk for taking me under their wing for the past uh, three years to help me edu get further my education mm -hmm. and now for the entrepreneur course. But getting back to the interview, um, you were talking about uh, people being employed. Oh, I seen that at Zellers and Shadagi, Walmart. But um, I, I guess there is people, like you said, working in the community of Ganawage that are disabled, but they're, it's not readily advertised. You know, like we have uh, uh, Joni at KSCS. We have a few people here and there, but uh, you know, I, I I would like to have see, I would like to have seen uh, I would like to have seen more employers step up to the plate because uh, this I had to create myself mm -hmm. to, through the uh, help of Mohawk TV plus. Um, Gunawagi Marion Center, but if I if I 
if I didn't like this, and don't get me wrong, I like doing TV, but if I wanted to take a regular job in a regular uh, store, I, co I couldn't just go and approach an employer uh, on my own, because I would have to go, would I have to, go, would I have to have gone through day one, is that the first? It depends what you were looking to do. Okay. I mean, as Jean mentioned before, it's all based on the individual, and it's based on the individual client's uh, disability. Uh, what can they do? What are they limited in, in, in being able to do? Um, I mean, as I said, we've seen disabled people working, people with intellectual handicaps, people with physical handicaps. Again, it all comes down to what does the individual want to do? I mean, obviously, someone with a, a severe physical handicap uh, can't do iron work or construction, but there are other things they can do. And that's how the employment counselors help them along. To, we have a, a number of functions within our uh, uh, intake and with our, within our process. Uh, the employment readiness scale, career cruising, all these uh, activities that the client uh, also is involved in because they, they, it's not just the employment counselor doing it all for the person. It's the person gets involved in uh, deciding what they want to do. And I guess that's the biggest part. What does the client want to do? And we help them to try to determine if they don't know what they want to do. We help them to try to determine what they want to do. And then to realistically help them to decide, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is what I can do. Now we move on from there. Yeah, that's the kind of process I went through. Yeah. When I went, when I went to see, see my employment counselor, and it, it was kind of easy when she said, I'll be responsible for my part, but you have to be responsible for your part and tell me what you want to do. That's right. You know, I can help you uh, do, the, do the legwork from my part, but you have to tell me what you want to do. Exactly. And we had to take into account my physical limitations and all that at the same time, you know. But um, as Gene knows, I don't like to consider myself uh, quote unquote disabled. I know I am, but I try to put that behind me and I know there's barriers every day to face within the community of Ganawage and out there, but I try to put that behind me and look, and I look forward and have a positive attitude. So is there anything else that you feel we didn't cover? Um, I think the only thing that uh, maybe we didn't cover was the fact that, you know, getting it out, the information out to the community and the employers about the fact, yes, there are people with uh, disabilities, uh, developmental and physical disabilities, but a lot of them do want to work. They do want to better themselves, improve themselves, like any individual. They want to improve themselves, and uh, given the opportunity, um, they can do a work, can do a, a good job. And it's not, it's more to focus on what they can do, versus what they can't do. And uh, that again, that comes down to a little bit of awareness, uh, communication, uh, that sort of thing. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you've seen um, previous shows of Walking My World, but that's what we that's what we try to cover here. We don't try to cover the the, the deficits so much. We try to cover the positives. And by you coming here today and explaining mm -hmm. uh, what they walk and do. For people with special needs, you've opened up a door, and um, uh, I thank you for coming. I I expect, hopefully, I hope I hope for you that your phone your your phone may get a little busy after this sh the show airs because people will, with special needs uh, need to need to see something like this interview that you're doing today because some people with disabilities want to work, like you said, but they don't know the steps mm -hmm. that I've taken. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy that's out there, but I know a lot of people that will, will, will just generally say, ah, I'll go to the day program because it's easier. And they won't, they need to be coaxed. And for lack of a better term, um, some people need more um, help than others to even, to do, do, even to do those steps. And that's why there's uh, people to help them. But I thank you for coming to do the interview today. And uh, 
good luck with your work because it's a very uh, challenging job. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having us. Yeah. If you have any comments or questions, you can email me at mike.dell at paulcom.ca. Ona. More than 14% of all Canadians have a disability. For Aboriginal First Nations people in Canada, there are 33% of people living with disabilities. People living with disabilities are subject to exclusion, poverty, and isolation. There are higher rates of depression, suicide, violence, and abuse for people with disabilities. We know that for Aboriginal people with disabilities in Canada, all of these rates and percentages are even higher. Statistics according to Independent Living Canada. Kanyak ke haga thadi adrasthe kayerni ga hiado zewa de roro.